And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. Challenger, only seconds after leaving the launch pad, according to NASA, has exploded. It just has the same seats that a like, normal car has. It's literally a normal car in space. And we're going back to the moon, back to the future, and this time, back to space. I should tell you that the first mission is scheduled to land on Mars on July the 4th, 1997. We will undertake extended human missions to the moon as early as 2015. We launched a new spacecraft as part of a re-energized space program that will send American astronauts to Mars. We will not only plant our flag and leave our footprint for an eventual mission to Mars. What you're seeing here is a mirage. It is Photoshop, but it's it's has to be. Five, four, three, two, one. The one thing globe believers need to understand is that you don't just take the spinning ball earth and flatten it out and put it back in the heliocentric model. Like it's just the only misfit planet and it's flat and the rest of the planets are round. No flat earther has ever said that, no flat earther will ever say that because it's not what we believe. The earth isn't a pancake floating in outer space and you will never hear a flat earther say that. And if you would ever actually take the time to study it for yourself or hear a flat earther through, then you would find that it's much different and things would actually make more sense. They've got the narrative control to where anyone that goes to search for this, they're gonna see pancakes floating up in space, you know, and it turns people away. Or they see a snow globe, a snow globe out in the middle of space with water falling off the sides and they're like, what is this? It turns them away. The mainstream agenda was to push their false narrative, all these hit pieces on flat earth. 2016, 2017, uh, th that was pretty much the end of the YouTube era uh, where we could actually find real evidence, real you know content. Any search engine, it's it, the algorithms are, are suited to their favor. You're, you're gonna see all the hit pieces, you're gonna see all the stuff that's there to debunk flat earth. So it's just, uh, it's almost impossible to get the real information. YouTube played their part in it, and not just cherry picking which videos they wanted to show, but deciding whether or not they wanted you to subscribe to somebody. So on several occasions and with several different content creators, I'd press the subscribe button to then find out several days or several weeks later that I couldn't find that, that content creator, assuming they'd either been deleted or they'd been censored beyond belief. Um, and of course he had been because my subscription that was previously made was no longer there. And I know that I hadn't un unsubscribed to anybody. And then resubscribing, you'd find again that down the line that the same things reoccurred. There's a major campaign by Google and YouTube and all of these corporate uh, lying companies to discredit the flat earth. Why do they have that disclaimer under every video dealing with the topic of flat earth that it is an archaic, antiquated, outdated model that the ancients used to believe in. Of course, the ancients were stupid. They didn't know how to build Gothic cathedrals and they didn't know how to build cities and pyramids. The problem is people that think that flat earth is stupid think flat earth is stupid because they're thinking of a stupid flat earth. And they ridicule and make fun of flat earthers. It's absolutely ridiculous. Since 2015, the content providers for flat earth have had a living hell. We have been ridiculed, we have been trolled, we have been censored beyond belief by YouTube. Uh, it's really difficult to get the truth out there. YouTube controls the algorithm. Who owns YouTube? Google. The, these are these big corporations that came in and said, the flat earth is getting way too big. People are finding this out. We don't want them to find this out. This will just completely destroy our agenda that we've worked so hard for. We're losing it because of our own technology that we created. So they had to get involved. Withholding information and knowledge is a form of control. Now for new people coming into the subject, if you research Flat Earth, the Google um, analytic will give you government hate propaganda against the Flat Earth truth. If you go to Google and try to find anything Flat Earth related, then the first thing that's going to pop up is the Flat Earth Society. And that is something that has absolutely nothing to do with this movement. In fact, it's um, a completely made up organisation in order to deter anybody looking for some sort of truth. 
so that you'd first of all get to that page, you'd see these ridiculous accusations and this spinning disc illusion that's going upwards in space that I can assure you nobody believes in. If the GLOBE model was as strong as they claim to be, then there wouldn't be so much concern with anybody talking about a stationary Earth model. Now everything's fine in court until somebody walks in with a load of shit on you. Everything's fine until somebody out there has evidence that's going to prove you guilty. guilty. And that's when you start acting suspicious, that's when you start panicking, that's when you start putting con uh, damage control out there, which is inevitably what these bots are, what these trolls are on social media, and of course, the algorithms. This is just a new lie that was started in the 20s, and even before then, they weren't really teaching anything about the world and where we were, it was just common knowledge. One of the main arguments that globe believers come at you with is we've known for 2,000 years Aristophanes figured it out with his sticks and shadows. Well, Aristophanes may or may not have been a real mathematician. He figured out the shape of the earth. That would have made him the Michael Jordan of mathematicians, but nobody ever mentioned him in a book until the mid-1900s. What's crazy is I've talked to some elderly people and they've told me that back in their day when they were in school, they didn't even learn about people like Copernicus or Galileo. Everything's up for grabs at this point. People like Christopher Columbus and any other figure in history could be totally false or created just for some sort of agenda. This is everywhere. We found somebody in uh, Croatia. They said they were teaching flat earth through the 1930s. Most people think that this flat earth versus globe earth has been going back and forth for thousands of years. No, it has not. This is a brand new deception. They come up with these stories, these fictional stories, fictional characters to reinforce that we live on a ball. All of our globe provers, Galileo, Aristophanes, Copernicus, the pictures of them show that they're masons, but I contend that we don't even know if they're real. All of our history is a lie. I've met people that said that they were taught flat earth in the early 1960s in school. They were taught flat earth and globe earth, and then it kind of just went away. I interviewed Ruth, a 102 year old woman back in February of 2020, and she was taught flat earth uh, in public school in Connecticut. Tell me your name. Ruth Heath. Ruth, and how old are you today? 102. 102, so you were born in? 1918. 1918. And um, we were just talking and I asked you what, what shape the earth is, and what did you say? What were you taught in school when I in elementary school? I was taught in school that the earth was flat. Where did you go to school, Ele elementary school? I went to Spoogelin School in Hamden, Connecticut. So how does it make you feel to realize that you were right as a I, kid? It makes me feel better. It, it does make you feel better, right? Oh, it makes me feel alive. My hope. Oh my God, that is so true. My whole life, I believe, yes. you know, what I was taught. That's and then true. when I discovered the flat earth. You feel better you, about it. Because we are the center of creation. That's right. We are important. That's right. We are here. We are God's children. And when all the problems that are happening in this world today. I'll give you some good news. A lot of the problems that they report on the news aren't even real. That's right. In, that's right. They're just keeping us in keeping fear. Up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I understand that. I understand. They just say what they want people to know. That we never went to the moon? That that was all fake? Is that right? That's correct. I saw that all happening. Yeah, so did I, and we all believed it, but that was just to reinforce that people to believe they can live on a ball, they can walk on a ball. Oh, it's such a lie. It's such a lie, but knowing the lie is like knowing going to a magic I, show. I woke up. Yes. That's what we call it. We call it red. This is this is your moment of waking up. Oh. It's when you go to a, see a magician and you know how the tricks are done. And the magic no longer works on you, and you're free from the illusion. So knowing this is going to free your heart. Cry. Yeah, it's okay. Cry. Happiness. Yes. Tears of yes. joy. Yes. Thank you. All right, give me a hug. Here we go. <laughs> All right. 
Rockefeller uh, seems to have a role in this. He started the General Education Board and continued being involved with the educational system. The fact of the matter is, the people that have been in control, they're in control now, and they're gonna continue to be in control, whether they pass it down or change the name, whatever it may be. But yeah, I mean, whenever Rockefeller's name is tied to something, it's always something to question, that's for sure. That's a huge red flag for me, that they can come in and change everything we know, all of history, and turn it into deception and keep teaching the deception over and over and over again until it becomes the norm. The same man who said that he wanted a nation of workers and not a nation of thinkers, this was the same person who was found guilty of antitrust violations around the turn of the 20th century, who then went on to get his fingers in all of the education systems, um, of course, with the promise of, I'll give you money, I'll make sure that your school has everything that it needs as long as you push these textbooks as long as you push these narratives and you push these ideas, I'm going to give you a nation of workers and not a nation of thinkers. And that's exactly what we've become. Now, this should tell you something, why we can't talk about, literally, the thing that we're standing on. Why is that? Knowing that there is a creator, absolutely. That is one of the main reasons to hide this. But, you know, at the same time, um, it's, it's nowhere in, near comparison when a billion people find out that there's more land. It's about hidden land. I think there's possible they could be hiding land in here somewhere with us. And I think that the Antarctica Treaty is very, very, very sinister and there must be something else going on. They went really, really, really tough with their implementation of the, you know, the Antarctic Treaty and everything else, and just to keep people away from the truth. They didn't want people to know about more land. Haven't we been fighting over land forever? Isn't that what always happens? Countries fighting over land, but not on the outskirts of Antarctica. Oh, no, no, no. No fighting there. They're all in agreement. You can't go there. You can't explore any of it. That treaty was in effect in 1959. It can't even be questioned until the year 2041. The longest lasting treaty uh, that all of the world signed on to at the same time and is still in place. Antarctica is the container of our world oceans. What is beyond Antarctica? Um, why is the government hiding Antarctica from us? Why is Antarctica completely off limits except for taking a tour of a little peninsula off of South America, which is nothing? And people go, well, you can go to Antarctica. We spent months trying to actually do it. Yeah. I was going to send a crew. They won't call back. You can't even go there. There's one peninsula where you look at penguins. Exactly. So I, and it. then you think, oh, I would. Oh, I have some friends that went to South Pole. Yeah. Yeah. They, they put them uh, in that little island with penguins. You can't yeah. just say you went to Antarctica and you walked around it. He's like being in New Jersey and say, saying you were chilling in California. It's, it's Huge. There's about a hundred different companies that you can spend a lot of money to go on a little guided tour of just that peninsula, but all of those companies are owned under one umbrella. One person controls them all. They don't let anybody explore Antarctica. We'll be a international headline in about five minutes. <laughs> Australian Navy ship Tristan. Bad boys, bad boys. Is it? The turret is turning our way. The turret's turning at us. Wait, we should Just go. When people say, why the lie? One of the main answers is they're hiding more land. What if 
we can truly become free. The whole reason for this is because of more land. Because think about it, if there's more real estate, if there's more resources, natural resources, if there's more food for our starving children, if there's more space, more room for us to get away from the trafficking, if there's places where we can go and other civilizations we can be a part of where they don't charge you for water, they don't charge you for free energy, they don't charge you for property taxes. What if there is more land? Nobody can go explore Antarctica, period. Because if humanity found out there's more land, then the heliocentric theory is gone. They can't start adding more <laughs> continents on the bottom of a ball. It's just, they, they wanted it silence right away. There is evidence out there through old maps, uh, namely the thousand year old Japanese Kawawashi map, which shows continents and lands outwardly of what they call the ice shelf or the ice wall. So why are they teaching the globe model? Well, you see, the, the globe is a container and it's a container of all the known land. The Jesuits and the Freemasons, they needed a new model because they wanted a new world order. Right now on a ball or in a snow globe, there's only seven continents. That's all there is. So everything is, is it's very limited. We have a limited supply. Resources are very scarce because the earth is a globe, right? It's cut off, everything's cut off. If you open it up and there is more land, then there's plenty of resources. More land means more resources. Well, that's huge if they're hiding something like that. There's a scene in the Truman Show where Truman is like, I want to be an explorer when I get older. I like to be an explorer, like the great Magellan. Oh, well, you're too late. There's really nothing left to explore. Nothing. Imagine if there's like all these beautiful places to explore still and finding out that there's all this land, it just opens up the door for discovery again. Have you ever heard of the eyewitness testimony written in the books, The Iron Republic? The Smoky God, Worlds Beyond the Poles? In the late 1800s, there was a series of articles written in Florida Magazine about a politician that was tired of what was going on here, got a big ship and a crew, was exploring Antarctica, and he went, found a passageway through, and he popped out into the ocean, was lost for about a month. Finally, they found land with a city, and they pulled up, and it was a very advanced, quite different civilization, and a very friendly, and they stayed there, and they, they, he writes about all the experiences he had there. In the late 1800s, they were talking about more land beyond Antarctica. Remember, the word extraterrestrial means extra land. They're telling you that there's more land in here that they don't talk about. There could be more land in some of the oceans where it's just all blue on the map. Nobody knows, you're not cruising around on big ships or flying over it on planes and looking, you know, nobody's out there charting anything. Have you heard of such a thing as no-fly zones? For instance, you can't fly in certain areas near the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. The reasons being is because there are lands there that um, we're not supposed to know about. They don't want those lands to be discovered. All these corrupt systems that are stealing money from us, kidnapping our children, um, just doing horrible things. They rely upon the cattle staying on the ranch, the slaves on the plantation. That's why Flat Earth is the most important, the most important knowledge we can obtain. It's because there is more land. Don't look at us and say, go prove it. They won't allow us to go prove it. We're not the lazy ones here. We're being restricted from going to prove this to you. So because of that, of course we're gonna speculate. It's a red flag. If that's not a red flag to you, I don't know what is. They won't allow us to go. Allow us to go. If we go and there's nothing there, I'll admit I'm wrong. But all signs point that they're hiding more land. You have to have permission to do everything. You have to have permission to marry the love of your life. 
you have to have permission to travel down the road. When we had the inalienable right to travel from point A to point B, you people think you're free. You're not free. You're free range chickens. That's what you are. You're free range chickens held in an area. You're not allowed to go past. And if not, you go to jail or you get shot. Stay on the plantation, do what you're supposed to do, pay your taxes and shut up, right? Well, if there is more land, and I sincerely believe that there is, then that's the perfect reason to lie to everybody. And it's not just about hiding a place for, for, for more resources and where, where else we can go and dig for gas and gold. It's not about that, they're hiding freedom. They know that as soon as we all find out that there's another place to go without dictatorship, that we'd be gone. There's endless amounts of everything, and um, there's so much more land out there. And there's many places to explore, and um, they just want to keep us here in the middle of the pond, um, stuck here thinking that this is all there is. What happens to the price of gold and all natural resources if there's more land? Gold can't go to a dollar an ounce. Gasoline can't go to 20 cents a gallon. We can all have, you know, thousands of acres of land to ourselves. The whole system crumbles. The entire system crumbles, period. On the other hand, we have uh, the North, which is also off limits. I went on my first official trip. I was going with my father and my grandpa Sinclair up to the North Pole. It was a very glamorous destination. I figured I was finally going to be led into the reason for the existence of this high security Arctic base. That was exactly right. We drove slowly through and past the buildings on a special top secret mission. And that's when I understood just how powerful and wonderful my father was. The North Pole is a biggie. It's always been in my mind. I've juggled with the idea, is, is there hidden land? Could they have possibly hidden a continent in the Arctic Ocean, which is seemingly an ocean? They could hide land there. Many, many old maps will show you the Hyperboreum, four continents, and in the center, Axis Mundi. And I think that is what's there. I think there is Mount Meru. And I think that gives off an acoustic device. There's definitely something special going on up there. And if you just think, think about that long enough, why do compasses point north? I mean, that's really wild in itself. What if we all took our compasses out and just followed them until it stops? A compass will always point north towards the magnetic north. There's some kind of force or some type of energy, frequency, vibration that's pulling that needle to the north. It's crazy to think that all compasses are pointing north to the North Pole. No compass points south. There is no South Pole. There's no compass that's gonna be out there. Go south. And no, it's, it's come past, come to the north. There's something there. I think we can all agree there's something there. And it's crazy that they cover it up. They've covered it up for so long. There's ancient civilizations, the Nordics, there's people have talked about, you know, the Rupert's Negra, the, the uh, Mount Maru, the giant magnetic mountain at the center. An entire magnetic mass or a mountain that is strong enough to make everybody's compass point north. When I was a kid in school, they showed us a National Geographic video of the guys that getting to the North Pole and they just basically made it look so horrible and miserable and dark and cold that no kid ever in his life would go, hey, I wanna to go to the North Pole. So if you watch any documentary about the North Pole or anybody venturing to the North Pole, all you're gonna find is some dude mobbing on the ice sheet and he's got a little device in his hand. He's like, three, two, one, North Pole. And that's not the North Pole, man, that's I just don't know what this is. It's a map. My father showed me a, a map like this once. Inside this circle is your world and my world. Many others, no one knows how many. 
The Dark Tower stands at the center of all things. And it stood there from the beginning of time. And it sends out powerful energy. I think that there's possibly a North Pole hole part of the electromagnetic torus, which gives off a green light, which you see as the Northern Lights. The North Pole is the center of the Earth. It is a hyperbola. Because we live in a toroidal field solar system, there must be a plane of inertia intersecting it in the middle, and there must be a hyperbola hourglass in the middle. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, it calls this Mount Meru. And why are we not allowed to go anywhere near there? Well, simply because you cannot go there. It is a magnetic toroidal hyperbola. Therefore, there is no way that you can fly anywhere near the North Pole in the center of the Earth. Admiral Richard Byrd said he found more land uh, you know, in the North as well as the South. Um, there's a book called The Smoky God of a Father and Son that uh, end up finding more land in a race of giants with technology beyond your wildest imagination. Cartographers have charted, you know, maps with land in the center, you know, where all compasses point. There's just a lot of evidence pointing to more land. So yeah, hundred percent, I, I would put my life on it. If there's more land at the north. It's just as heavily guarded as the south. I can't like go, go check the north and uh, yeah, let me go check. I'll take some pictures and videos and come back. <laughs> You're not even gonna get that close. You're gonna be turned around, the same as the South. All the way up until the 1600s, they had four land masses around the North Pole region. And uh, right after the 1600s is when it slowly started disappearing until finally it was all gone. And you can verify this for yourself if you just go back before the 1600s and look at maps of all sorts, you'll see these land masses on each one. And then sure thing, these land masses just started being deleted from history. So what are they hiding at the North Pole? If we sit back and observe all of this evidence, this eyewitness testimony, the, the verdict would come back guilty. It would come back guilty. Okay. You are moving a thousand miles an hour as Earth rotates. You are moving 18, what's it, 18 miles per second in orbit around the sun, and mm -hmm. you don't feel any of that. Okay? Okay. You don't feel any of that. If it's trying to fling you off the Earth, okay. but the force of gravity is resisting back, by what force is it trying to fling you off? That upward centrifugal force subtracts from the gravitational force that the Earth is trying to put on you. It subtracts. Okay. So Chuck, what do you weigh here, here and now? Uh, 192 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you the 190 pounds, okay? Okay. So if you do the math, you run to Ecuador, because we're in the Western Hemisphere, so let's stay there. You run to Ecuador, you will not be 190 pounds. You'll be like 185 pounds. What? That's how significant it is. That's if I if I did my math correct, and I think I did, there are pounds less that you weigh for living on the equator than for living anywhere else, simply because the spinning earth is trying to fling you off. Nice. Yes. Yes. If the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour in a curved trajectory, we're dropping at a rate of miles per minute but somehow none of that inertia affects these rocks here, which are perfectly balanced. The fact is, the Earth is stationary, and that is scientific, not pseudoscience. In 1879, George Airy, astronomer royal for 49 years, who did a telescope experiment and proved that the Earth was stationary then we have Parallax, also known as Robotham, who carried out an experiment in the late 1800s on the Bedford Levels experiment, where he went at a distance of six miles, which should have showed up um, some sort of curvature of around 16 foot. No curvature, 
was seen at all. Then we have Michelson Morley and Sagnac in the early 1900s with their interferometers using light instead of telescopes this time. And with their interferometer experiments, they proved that the ether over the Earth, the field, is moving and the Earth is stationary. We also had Michelson Gale. They did an experiment in the 1930s and proved that the Earth is stationary. One of the greatest science experiments of all time, in my opinion, is from Marconi. Marconi, in 1901, set up transmitters to send radio waves, like signals, wireless signals across the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, okay? So he has one set up in Europe and one set up in Canada, okay? And they're sending signals there. I think the letter S was the first one. Boom! And it worked. Almost 2,000 miles across the ocean, they got the signal. There is no curvature. You're talking about 600 miles of curvature between the two points, but it worked because all water's level. I don't even know if he was trying to talk about that at the time. It was just more about his technology that he was coming out with. And have you learned about that in school? No. Then we have Pierluigi Gina, a colleague of Marconi. And before he died, he showed people in his laboratory how the Earth is stationary. You can go to my channel, Mr. Astrotheology, and you can see uh, videos of Mr. Pierluigi Igina proving in his laboratory with strobe lights how you can prove quite easily that the Earth is stationary. Every scientific experiment throughout time looking for axial rotation or curvature has proven the opposite. They don't teach this in schools. Any observation, when you go outside on a calm morning, you can see a perfectly glass lake. And your senses will tell you that you know nothing is moving. We, stationary earthers, we have science, real science, on our side. And the Globies have pseudoscience. In fact, all they have is Einstein saying, I have come to believe that no optical experiment can prove that the Earth is moving. And yet, the Earth is moving. Science! Yeah, Albert Einstein. I, I always recommend people go watch Albert Einstein in his interviews. Interviews. He's reading cue cards. He's reading notes that someone handed him, kind of like people on TV nowadays. There is no optical experiment ever been conducted that can prove that the Earth is moving. The Earth is spinning at 1,040 miles an hour. You can't feel it, you can't measure it, you can't observe it, you can't repeat it, but trust us, there's not one experiment that shows the Earth is spinning or moving whatsoever. There is, however, an experiment that was proven in Behind the Curve. Bob Nodell was uh, talking about the ring laser gyro showing that there is a apparent 15 degrees drift throughout most of the day. When we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. And this was taken out of context. It was uh, later, the experiment was done at a higher altitude and it showed a different uh, rotation speed, which absolutely proves it's not the Earth that's moving, that it's the ether that is spinning above us. Netflix is mainstream. Netflix is the, you know, the alternative mainstream narrative. Netflix can't go against the grain. They'll lose their contract. A documentary, like a mockumentary. I'm sure mm -hmm. someone watched our movie and was like, whoever made this movie is a government chill and right. sure they're just trying to hide it on Netflix it's one, in on it trying to hide it yeah, he was, accidentally proves that the earth is round <laughs> uh, but, it was the biggest mic drop it was the yeah. biggest mic drop and you I know, love that I, you kind of cut it cut it the thing is we have technology that is outrunning their lies now we have time lapse ooh imagine that we have time lapse where you can point at the sky and year after year day after day hour after hour the sky spinning. Every day there should be different stars 
random stars in the sky if we are traveling at 650 million miles an hour, which is Mark 870,000. Do you really believe that every year we move through space at five and a half trillion miles every year? And yet every year, the same stars keep turning over our Earth. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, year after year after year. And yet none of those constellations distort, change shape, get brighter. There has never been in recorded history, we have never seen any star get brighter or dimmer or any shape of those constellations which are still recognizable today as they were thousands of years ago they never suffer any parallax or distortion Polaris has never moved in all of recorded history point your camera up at Polaris and do a time lapse and watch God's perfect timepiece spin above you and we move five trillion six hundred and ninety four million miles through space every year. Congratulations to you if you believe that. It's called education, indoctrination and dumbing down. If you look back in history, you got Universal, their company, they started off with a logo with a globe in it, but it wasn't until like the 1920s that they actually had the, the motion one where it was a spinning globe. And they actually had an airplane in the early ones, like leaving a, a, a chemtrail that said Universal, which is kind of funny. Nobody has been high enough to even see what it looked like. They were definitely trying to instill the image of a globe in people's heads because obviously early on in the movie industry, they were one of the most popular companies to make movies, so people were going to the theater and seeing this globe. So they're showing you a globe before every single movie to program your mind. They were showing this globe before they even went up there to see what it was. I think the first man ever to go up and check is Picard going up there. I mean, that's a story we're not taught in school. From the practical point of view, Professor Picard's experiment is of the highest possible importance. These timelines, these, these dates, these, these, these are facts. We got August Picard coming out in the 1930s in an actual publication by a science journal saying that the Earth looks like a flat disk with an upturned edge. Besides Universal programming you, you had Walt Disney programming you with space documentaries for almost 15 years straight. Some pretty crazy propaganda in the 1950s. There was one called Man in Space. He's talking about taking men to the moon in a rocket. And then if we cruise on, we got Richard E. Bird. He goes on Long Jean's chronoscope and he's sitting down and he's telling people. Strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. Shortly after Richard E. Bird did that interview, they put the Antarctic Treaty in place. And then one year later, NASA is established. <laughs> Almost zero hour at Cape Canaveral and enlarged 16 millimeter pictures show a monkey specially trained and conditioned for voyaging in space. Two monkeys had been selected for the job. They called them Abel and Baker, A and B of course. In fact, the monkeys came down safely near Antigua. Reported none the worse after blazing the trail for human space travel. They come in and they're the gatekeepers for your mind. Like, they're making sure that people think that they live on a spinning ball. And that's their sole purpose, that it has always been their sole purpose.
That is the magic of engineering. I would wear a mask on my face in a nanosecond, but unfortunately we lost the technology. It can take days, even weeks, to produce just a single image. The dazzling final results, enough to keep us all dreaming. NASA is hiding the frickin' flatness of the Earth. Why? It's okay to say, I have a fisheye lens, right? Because, yeah, fisheye lenses are useful. You know, you get more, you know, uh, in architecture or, you know, realtors use them. Psh. But when you're doing it too much and you're not really coming out and saying why, questions build up. a fisheye lens was invented. So these space agencies had a heads up already. And the fisheye lens was originally, I think, $27,000 to purchase. And this is in 1923. I mean, today that's about, what, 100 grand, 200 grand equivalent in, in cost. And people would tell me, Hippler, I, I'll give you that. NASA is a lying government entity, right? But what about Red Bull? Red Bull is just an energy drink. And I saw Felix Baumgartner jump out of a space capsule. Flat Earthers did a great job of debunking that. Of course it's a fisheye lens, it's not even a question. What most people don't know is that Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, the science priest of modern day, that everybody loves and they listen to him. Oh, he's so smart. Oh. He is a smart man in the sense of he knows that we debunked the shit out of that. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, Felix Bumgardner, edge of space jump. Now, you know, I, I don't, it's, he wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he's like, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth. <laughs> it is, he just don't. That stuff is flat. so much pressure on Neil deGrasse Tyson to come clean. He had to. We exposed Felix Baumgartner. That's a complete fisheye lens. There's no curvature at all on this earth, let alone they're trying to sell it as 20, 20, 23 miles up, there's curvature. Even though people will sit there and swear they saw curvature out of an airplane 10 miles high, you know, okay. So your priest, Neil deGrasse Tyson, admits 23 miles up, no curve. How do you feel about that? All right, maybe you say this, no big deal. Okay. Even though Felix Baumgartner himself said he could see the curvature of the earth. It's almost overwhelming. But you standing there in the pressure suit, the only thing that you hear is yourself breathing. You can see the curvative of the Earth. You can see the sky is totally black. You can see the curvative of the Earth. You can see the curvative of the Earth. You can see the curvative of the Earth. That's 120,000 feet, four times higher than most passenger planes fly. So that should make you go, hmm, right away, what's going on here? Who's lying, right? But you don't think there's an agenda here? You don't think people are lying here? Fast forwarding to recently, Richard Branson, Mr. Billionaire himself. Officially the first billionaire to travel to space, Sir Richard Branson. So you go 63 miles up, you would all probably assume that, of course, you could see this giant curve of Earth. You're 63 miles up. 
Richard Branson supposedly goes up 63 miles, even though it's nothing but fisheye lens footage. We expose that. Here comes Neil deGrasse Tyson again. Damn his control time. Oh, by the way, you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you. Do you know how high up above the earth he was? No. So if you take a 63 globe, miles. Oh, well, yeah, tell you right. So take a schoolroom globe and ask how high above it is he? So he's about two millimeters above the surface of a schoolroom globe. Mm, that so is nobody has seen the curvature of the earth from that height. Just, right. I just want to make that clear. You can't see the curve out of an airplane. Right? 10 miles. You agree? I hope you agree so far. Okay. So 10 miles up, no curve. Red Bull, 23 miles up, no curve. Branson, 63 miles up, no curve. So where is this curve at that you swear by? Because if you live on a ball, I don't care how big the ball is, it could be four times the size of what they told us. You would still see a physical curve at some point. That's what the horizon's supposed to be. That's what, that's how the sun is going. I mean, there's a curve of the earth. All these theories involved with the curve of the earth get thrown out the window. That's, that's, um, you know, that, 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 that's what happens with a new company. This is the fiction section. Fiction means it's a made up story. Oh, hey, Elmo, I bet we can find your Galactic Gale comic book here. We all know who our enemies are. They are called the globalists with their false idol that they give children on the teacher's table at kindergarten, the false globe of the global agenda. People are just deceived. I mean, I grew up from kindergarten. It was a globe. My kids, you know, they graduated from kindergarten and it was a freaking globe. They gave them a globe at graduation to take home like an inflatable beach ball. And I was looking at that thing going, oh my God. We are taught that the earth is a ball before we can talk. In school, there's a globe in the class. One of the first worksheets we get is a sheet on the orbits of the planets and the sun. And I actually still remember that sheet. I, I did it, I got it right, I was so proud of myself. Uh, Sesame Street has astronauts on, Disney, it's all globe programming. So your entire world belief is around this. If you think about it, they've gotten us at a, a very, very young age with the line. Before we, we have any critical thought, the capability of thinking for ourselves. They they teach us lies from the very beginning, from Tooth Fairy, Santa, dinosaurs. You know, with Santa, for instance, I mean, we're taught this lie, you, you better be good. We need you to stay in line and be good. Don't be naughty, be nice. You wanna be on that nice list. Santa will come and bring you these material gifts and then Fast forward, you find out Santa isn't real. For what, five, six, seven years, however long the lie went on for, you've been conditioned a certain way to act a certain way. So you'll fall in line. You'll do exactly what mommy and daddy tell you, what the teachers tell you. And when you realize that lie, it, it subconsciously, you, you're, you're taught at that point, it's okay to lie. It's okay to lie, it's okay to accept lies, it's okay for people to lie to you, it's okay for you to lie. So the whole world is a liar. Everyone's a liar now, because they were taught at a very young age, it's okay to lie. They get you with these lies of Tooth Fairy and Santa at a young age, so when you're an adult, you can't tell the difference between a lie and, and reality. And when you do find out it's possibly a lie, oh, it's okay, you're subtle, you're, um, you're just, you're passive. You allow the lie because you're just, you're used to, it's okay to lie. You've been conditioned your entire life. It's okay to lie, it's okay to be lied to. So when the lie comes out, people are just like, hey, okay, whatever. Uh, gotta turn on my Fox News. Gotta go to the bar, gotta go watch my, my, my football. Give them bread and circuses and they will never revolt. When people hear about Flat Earth, when I talk to them about it, they, they think it's the dumbest thing ever. They think I'm uneducated. They, they don't realize that they don't know what they're talking about. And people say, well, what about ships over the horizon? You explain that. What about sunset? You explain that. What about season? You explain that. And then they throw their hands up. They go, well, why does it matter? Why do, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work tomorrow. That's right where they want you. They want you working in your slave job. They want you obeying orders, doing what you're told and living paycheck to paycheck and just 
not realizing where you are. The truth is, we're not spinning out of control, lost in space where an asteroid could take us out. They want us believing we're running out of fuel. They want us to believe we're running out of food. When anyone can go and get a, a seed, stick it into the ground, water will fall from the sky and food will grow out of the ground. There is no shortage of water, food, space. Every American family could have a half an acre in Texas and the rest of the country would be empty. They're lying about everything. You let your kids get raised and taught by other people that you don't know what they're learning. Everybody's disconnected. There is no harmony or anything going on with human beings. We're all scattered, disconnected, and pretty much what they're doing with teaching us this whole lie about the Earth being a ball, and you're flying through outer space, and dinosaurs used to roam the Earth, and if they're, these powerful beings could get wiped out by a comet, then what are we gonna do if a comet comes? We're done. So the heliocentric model not only manages to keep us all completely worthless floating amongst um, the stars in space, but it also keeps us in fear that we're either going to knock into something in the future, or there's gonna be something that then bangs into us that causes some sort of horrendous collision and we're all gonna die or maybe, you know, some cartoon satellite has found another planet where there could be like flesh-eating monsters on there and it's, you know, some sort of crazy shit that they, they throw down your face and try and say, you know, this is, as well as everything else that you're scared of, keeping your house, keeping your health, keeping your family together, there's also a chance as well that some rock may, may fall from the sky and kill you tomorrow. And another thing people don't know is that not only in 1920 did Rockefeller change all the textbooks and come up with his own agenda of what they want you to know, but there was a man named George Lemaitre. I felt like you know, Einstein passed the torch to him or something. They were good friends, apparently, and George Lemaitre was a Catholic priest. Yeah, a Catholic priest. And in 1920, he said, hey, we came from a big bang. It's all about 1920 was a crazy year, huh? 1920, they said that we came from a big bang. We exploded from nothing. Well, how do you prove that? Well, no, you can't, but that's what was stated. So here's this Catholic priest where, in my opinion, they knew that even though non-religious people knew the earth was flat and stationary, they were trying to group, just call flat earthers at that time. They're flat earthers. They're all religious people. So let's bring forward a Catholic priest. Look, he's not a scientist. He's not government. He's a priest. He's Catholic. He's holy. This is brand new. This isn't thousands of years old. This isn't the Big Bang's been around for thousands of years. Heliocentrism has been around for thousands of years. No, they create fictional characters, Galileo, Copernicus. They, they create characters to support the, the, the New World Order, their agenda, the way they change the entire school system and structure of what we know and all the information and knowledge that we obtain, if it's, if it's false, then yeah, they got their goal, a nation of workers, not thinkers. No one thinks. What's the circumference of the globe? I have no idea. <laughs> How fast is it spinning at the equator? Don't know. How... Uh, fast is it orbiting the sun? Cody? How you have glasses is, how, on. You should know fast, this. <laughs> how fast is the sun, is the sun moving? Man, I, I, you're asking some questions I'm not ready to answer. <laughs> but see, this, I, is, this is the point. You guys laugh at flat earth, but one, you don't know what flat earth is, and worse is you don't even know what your own solar system is. They don't know their own model. You can ask them, how, what's the radius of the Earth? How was it found? What's the speed of the Earth around the sun? How fast is the Earth spinning at the equator? Well, how fast is it ch chasing the sun? How, how many miles does it go a year? How far is the sun? Nobody, they don't know any of these things, but yet they defend this and they ridicule and make fun of flat earthers. All the things that I was patronizing and condescending and going, oh, sloughing off, that's not worthy of me. They rose up. High level, and I remember saying, "Boy, the world is flat." I'm looking it in the eye. I see further. I see wider. I see clearer. I settled on uh, near infrared, like some of these cameras can be converted to near infrared. You know. So then I started taking photos, and since I was doing a lot of flying, I started going up, and boom, 
I was actually amazed to see the incredible flatness that you get from high altitude. Everywhere I looked, there was like clues that the Earth is flat. And I was like, this is blowing my mind. Everywhere I looked, the Earth is flat. And NASA is lying about the curvature. So I said, something is eerily wrong over here, man. When I saw across the uh, Gulf, right off the coast of Texas there in Louisiana, I was flying to Orlando, and I saw all the way out in the distance, and you could even see the rays of light at a different angle. That, that tripped me out. But if you really go up high, then you realize, oh my God, the Earth is extremely flat. This would be impossible on a globe. There is no eight inches per mile square. Equation for curvature of eight inches per mile squared has been debunked over and over again. The flat surfers with their P900s and their P1000 cameras are constantly seeing things way off, way off beyond the supposed curvature of it. In fact, uh, many tests have been done with lasers, cameras, filming mountain ranges three, four, five, six, seven hundred miles into the horizon, which are visible and shouldn't be visible if we were living on a globe. This is how much distance he covered with his camera. And he could see from here the Rocky Mountains. There you go. There is no eight inches per mile square. There's no way you can see 500 miles on the other side of this ball. And there's no buildings that are curving backwards. If point A to point B, you're on a ball, you know, they're not going to be flat up and down like on, on our flat Earth. They're going to be like this. There's no tilting. They've measured distances from the base of buildings to the top, level and flat. People look out at the ocean and you see ships and stuff, and it appears like these ships and boats, they go down. And that is a huge factor as to why people think the Earth is round. If you look at the ocean or a lake, it looks flat. Look at that. Look how straight, flat that horizon is. <laughs> looks flat, doesn't it? See, it looks like a table or a board. Now, once in a while, you might see mountains or hills, but those are just like little bumps on what looks like a flat earth. As ships sail away, they don't disappear all at once. No, first, the bottom will disappear. See, the bottom of the ship is gone. Now we can see midway up, and then the whole thing disappears. So people realized that the world is curved. I mean, it's a big curve, but it's curved. That's what we call pseudoscience. You could buy a camera now that zooms times 100, and you could zoom in on these ships and boats, leaving your view, and your human eyeball's view, and pull out a camera and zoom in on it, and suddenly you're back, it's on top of a level surface, still cruising. So the limit of your vision is where the sky meets the ground due to perspective. As they come together, that's the limit of your vision. That's called our horizon. The horizon is optical. If you had a super zoom camera, you can zoom in and make this angular size bigger to reveal small objects that you couldn't see. And then when you zoom out, it goes back together and things disappear into the horizon, not over. We see skylines uh, beyond what we're supposed to see. I mean, the visibility from 100, 200, 500 miles away, it debunks the whole eight inches per mile squared. Photogrammetry, I think, is one of the, the best way to convince yourself. You do multiple images of the ground, and then you put in a software, and you realize how flat it is. You're seeing it yourself, it's your data, nobody's lying to you. You've taken the data at yourself. It's not Jay Tolan that's trying to, you know, troll you. Like some people, they're like, he's trolling people, man. And it's not <laughs> SpaceX or NASA doing it either. It's, it's yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's yourself. You're doing your own experiment. Many times when you're looking out over water, there's waves. Well, those waves will block um, entire city skylines. If this was a wave right near, right near me, if my face was a city skyline, it blocks just the bottom. But if that wave was closer to you, 
it blocks much more of it. It's all perspective. And I thought I wasn't gonna get anything that would beat this until I found this photo from Randmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. Typically, we would not be able to see this. This image would be viewable from much, much higher in the sky up in space. The story has been one of the most viewed stories on our website ever. They say my explanation is a cover-up. A cover-up to their belief that this picture is proof the Earth is flat. The one goal I had was to prove that what people are seeing from the other side of Lake Michigan is not a mirage, that they are actually seeing the city. I think it's amazing, dude. It certainly did. It's not a mirage, I can tell you that. No. Our focal point was the Sears Tower, which is also known as the Willis Tower, right? Yes, the Willis Tower. The Willis Tower, and we can see it the entire time. We can see it the entire time. That's not a mirage. That's not a mirage. Whatever you're looking at. See it? Yeah. That's that. It's a guy right here. It's not a mirage. Yeah, that's the proof right here. That's the proof. I was shocked to find out that there are a number of people that believe the Earth is still flat and that to them, this is actually proof that the Earth is flat. One person just questioned me and asking me for a retraction of the articles and lies. Uh, a lot of people try and kind of be nice about it. Well, well are you sure you did it right? And then they send me links that the Earth is flat. Uh, and some are just pretty straightforward about it. And the title replies calling me a deceiver and that uh, I should check my degree or quit telling lies on television. It, it got me questioning a lot of things. Was or were my cal calculations right? No. No, no, you can obviously see Chicago from that far away. It really is the Chicago skyline. We can see things farther and farther away than that and prove it. You can prove it yourself. You can go there on a clear day and see the same thing. You can go do the same tests and prove it to yourself. That's the best way to do it, right? Prove it to yourself. You're not taking anyone's word for it. It's, it's you're doing your own experiment. It's not a mirage. It's not an illusion. It's Chicago from 60 plus miles away. I mean, we could barely see the street sign a few blocks ahead of us on a foggy day. I mean, they're spraying our skies with shit all the time. You can open your weather app right now and it'll tell you the visibility. But that's how far they're telling you you can see through the weather patterns. There's so many different factors of why we can't see that far. We're not superheroes. I mean, take any flat and level road around your house safely. Test it out, make sure it's level. But you take your camcorder and you bring it all the way down to the ground and you zoom in and, and you see all this distortion and it kind of vaporizes and, and globe heads want to act like that this bridge is bending around a curve and, and there's the curve. It's like, no, it's, it's, it's an optical illusion. That's all it is. This has been replicated many, many times. There is no curvature. Stop fooling yourselves. That even something like the sun, when it goes across this huge plane, it sets and it disappears due to perspective. So you're seeing it come and go on such a vast plane. It's so huge that the sun could come through and go so far away that it just goes out of your view and behind so many false horizons, i.e. mountains, trees, forests, city buildings, just you know, really tall things. Keep in mind, the sun is much smaller and close. This is an intelligently designed and created place. As a someone who stars are rotating around, knowing that we can only see a certain amount of light, I think only like 1%, there's only, there's only so much light our eyes can actually see. Unless you're on like DMT, I'm sure you can see way more lights. But naturally, we can't see that many lights in the sky. All ancient civilizations spoke about other bodies, other lights in the sky that may or may not be visible to us at any given time. It's crazy though, when you see solar eclipse, but you don't see the moon at all. I remember as a kid, I, I like, where's the moon now? And it's like, you just see this black circle and then it, everything goes back to normal, it seems like. it's like. 
that? What the heck just happened? On the total eclipse of the sun, the shadow that the moon casts on the earth is only 70 miles wide. That is impossible. But then they come up with umbra and penumbra, and it's just stuff to confuse your mind. We have an infinitely far sun sending diagonal rays from the side and straight rays from the middle where they cross each other. It makes absolutely no sense. I went live a few years ago on YouTube during the 2018 eclipse in the United States. Um, on a live event and we were all waiting for the moon to actually show up uh, to cause this elliptical, um, uh, this eclipse. And all we found was no moon showed up. So that blew my mind to think that there was actually no moon visible yet this uh, this effect of the sun literally being covered by an object I had witnessed. Why can't we see the moon approach the sun, eclipse the sun, or exit the sun? And we don't. We just see a black circle eclipsing the sun. We never see it next to the sun. Now people say, well, it's because the sun is so bright. When the moon is totally eclipsing the sun, you should be able to see the features on the moon. You should be able to with a regular camera, with your regular eyes, with an infrared camera, but it has never been seen. There's only been anti-flat earthers that will fake an image and fade it into a picture of the eclipse. There's no video of it. Think about what a, an amazing uh, video would be if they could film it from the International Space Station or from the moon itself. It never happens because I don't believe it. the moon that we see is what's eclipsing the sun. There's lots of ancient mythology about other dark bodies. There could be um, anomalous bodies up there. They're not actually visible to us. A celestial body that we perhaps can't see, because you know, there's no, on the, the spectrum of light, there's no, we can only see 1% of all the light rays, gamma rays, X-rays, you know, we can't see these certain frequencies and energies and lights. What happens is the sun is eclipsed by the so-called moon, but it's not the moon, it's actually the North Node. There's been, you know, times documented in the past where there's, you know, this eclipse, and the moon's supposed to be eclipsing, and there's no moon anywhere in the sky. Nowhere. Anywhere. And that, that makes absolutely no sense, so there's got to be another celestial body. The oldest ancient symbols, and it's the black sun, a celestial body that we perhaps can't see. A lot of ancient civilizations always spoke about a black sun. It's like, why are they talking about a black sun for hundreds, if not thousands of years? And that information now has turned into, oh, the black sun is an evil thing. It's like, well, yeah, of course, that's what they're selling it. They're selling it to you as an evil thing to stay away from it. They already don't want you to like the real sun in the sky. They push it so far away, they, they want you to not care about it. There's a reason it's close to you. There's a reason it's here for us. There might be more suns and moons on the outskirts of Antarctica, on the outer lands. There might be more suns and moons. There might be more suns and moons in our world here, but we just can't see it. And you talk about the seasons itself. Seasons prove the Earth is a stationary plane with a local sun. When the sun is circling over the Earth over here in the Tropic of Cancer, these people here, they have summer. But six months later, the sun is over here. It's going around over here. So Australia down here and South Africa and South America, now they have summer because the sun is local. It's not 93 million miles away. And the sun and the moon revolving, springing into the center seasonally and then springing back out again. This makes perfect sense than a spinning ball hanging on an invisible sky hook at a degree of 6.66 of a supposed axis, which tilts the Earth. People need to stop defending a theory that they were taught in kindergarten. So at sunrise, every sunrise should be arctically cold because that is the most severe tilt possible. And to make it worse, in the Northern Hemisphere, in the heliononsensical model, the sun is three and a half million miles farther away in our summer. But when the sun shows up on the horizon, 
I can feel the heat on my face immediately. I can get a suntan in June. But in December, at solar noon, when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, I can look up at the sun and barely feel the heat on my face. And also, it's three and a half million miles closer. The whole tilt thing doesn't make any sense. And when the sun is on this side, it only illuminates this part of the Earth because it's local. And this part is dark, that will be night. So it's quite easy to understand day and night and the seasons and explain them on the flat Earth than it is with the globe model. The sun, moon and stars are rotating around our heads like a perfect clock. And it goes out of your view as taking the light with it. This is an intelligently designed and created place. The sun does move about 15 degrees per hour uh, through the sky, but when it gets close to the horizon, it kind of stops and it stays there and it moves at a different speed. I filmed this uh, several times with my drone. No humidity and not over water. And it'll just stop and sit there and then it kind of just fades away as it goes into the distance. But at the same time, because of perspective, I have friends that were down at the beach that saw the sun set 10 minutes earlier from the bottom up. And that's simply because they're looking across a span of water that has uh, a hill with trees, uh, a tree line on it, which is hundreds of feet over their heads. But from their point of view, it's at eye level. And as the sun moves away, it just gets eclipsed by the tree line, which they think is eye level, but it's high up in the sky. Water, it's always flat, always level. So starting at the northernmost point, as far as I can get, of Lake Michigan, and then traveling south, you can see that red line here, that the body of Lake Michigan is 574 feet above sea level, and it's level. There's no change in elevation, there's no curve. This cross section shows what an undisturbed body of water looks like and that's level. We know that to be true. There's three properties of liquids. They have mass, they take up space, and they always take the shape of their container. The physics of water is to find and maintain level. So if it's in a cup, to this lake behind me, to the seas, to the oceans, that's why I call it sea level, because it's flat and level. No matter who tries to sell you the idea that water's curving over a ball, it's just not happening. That's the number one proof right there, just water alone. Water alone proves that the earth is flat because water always finds and maintains level, period. Water does not curve in its temporary state. It's finding its level. Once it, it hits the ground and finds its level, it remains level. I never even thought of the idea of water maintaining its level. I mean, that alone just was like mind blowing. Like absolutely water has to maintain its level. Like it's always, if it's calm and there's nothing going on, you know, it's, you look at a lake, it's just chill and flat. It has to be, it can't curve. There's nothing you can say or do to ever show water bending or curving. Water needs to be contained. No matter what you do, it's going to remain level. The flat earth proves beyond a shadow of a doubt the existence of intelligent design, a creator. And we are all important in the center of the universe. Yes, it is absolutely imperative that we know that there is a creator, that the sun, moon, and stars revolve around us, that we have a purpose. We are at the center of the universe. I didn't become a millionaire until I realized I was at the center of the universe. And then I have a purpose. Once you understand that you are at the center of creation, everything changes. And basically we're unplugging from the matrix. We're unplugging from the heliocentric system. And when you do that, the, the rulers of this world, uh, you unplug from them, you stop feeding them what they need. They want your fear energy, they want your labor, they want everything from you. And people unknowingly just keep giving it to them. I don't want my children to be lied to. And I don't want my grandchildren to be lied to either. So if this is going to start, it starts with you and I. You know, they inherit all this stuff. You go to school and they teach you. When I was in grad school, man, I was shocked that most people, most of my classmates were not really interested in learning. They, just, they were interested in passing a class. On the one side, 
tens and tens of scientists proven that the Earth is stationary and we have nothing on the globe side, so the Earth is stationary. No one thinks how easy it is to do this, and they pulled it off, unfortunately. But we're here now to completely reverse this, and people hate on us from the left and from the right. Everyone hates on us. Like, shut up with your flat air stuff, it's not important. It's the most important thing. It opens the door for everything else. You want to know the truth? You have to know where you live. This whole agenda is to keep people disconnected from our creator, you know? They want us to they want to just cut all our ties spiritually and that's one reason why they calcify our pineal gland. They don't care about our health. You know this by look at look at your water supply. Even the water that you'll drink yourself when you go and buy bottles of it, it's got chlorine in it, it's got fluoride in it. These are all um, chemical waste products that they then rebrand and put in our drinks and tell you, oh, well, it, it cleans it. We'll also take away all of the medicine that's kept people alive and well for centuries. And they'll tell you, oh, no, that's not good for you, that's not safe for you. Here's our product, here's our petroleum-based medicine that they've been pushing on us for the past 100 years. And of course, look at people's health, look at the world's health. Are we a healthy nation? Is any nation a healthy nation? No. And who's in charge of healthcare? The governments, the corporations. So it seems like everything that they touch turns to shit. So why do we allow them to touch everything? Stop defending Rockefeller, Rothschilds, all these goons, these people that want the New World Order, the modern day people, Bill Gates, Schwab, all these people that they're pushing for it and they feel like it's almost there. And we're sitting here fighting it. We're sitting here trying to wake the world up so we can have a peaceful and loving world again. And you're attacking us. Whose side are you on? We're trying to take these evil entities down that suppress our knowledge. We're trying to give knowledge back to the world so we can become powerful again. If there's more land, if a billion people found out tomorrow that they can all go to outer land space and visit other tribes and civilizations and explore technology and uh, animals, the whole system would crumble. And I know there's a lot of people out there, celebrities, people with big shows, big names, with big followings that know the truth of this world and you're keeping quiet just to protect your little empire. Well, now it's time to say something because the empire is falling. If we don't do something now, all of this is going away and the, they're, they're taking over this world. So speak out. It just takes one celebrity, one person with a big following and then it goes viral and then the entire system collapses. All of this world control is based on the heliocentric lie.